Thank you, Ralph Trainer, and uh, thank you folks for that warm Cooperstown welcome. This is an award that I will certainly cherish forever. I praise the Lord here today. I know that all my talent and all my ability comes from him, and without him, I'm nothing, and I thank him for his great blessings. I'd like for you to meet my very best friend, and she is my best friend despite the fact that this month we celebrate our 40th wedding anniversary, Lula Harwell. Lula, will you stand up, please? My son, Bill, right next to her, his wife, Diane, their youngsters. My son, Gray, his wife, Sandy, and their three youngsters. And my daughters, uh, Julie and Carolyn. I'm very proud of this award, but I'm even more proud of my family. You know, the life and times of Ernie Harwell could be capsuled, I think, in two famous quotations, one from a left-handed New York Yankee pitcher and the other one from a right-handed English poet. The Yankee pitcher Lefty Gomez once said, I'd rather be lucky than good. And the poet Alfred Lord Tennyson once wrote in his epic poem, Ulysses, I am a part of all that I have met. Well, I know that I'm a lot luckier than I'm good. I've been lucky to broadcast some great events and to broadcast the exploits of some great players. When I went to Brooklyn in 1948, Jackie Robinson was at the height of his brilliant career. With the Giants, I broadcast the debut of Hall of Famer Willie Mays. When I went to Baltimore, the great Brooks Robinson came along to replace my good friend George Cal at third base. And in my 22 years at Detroit, it's been a distinct privilege to watch the day-by-day -day consistency of Hall of Famer Al Kaline. Yes, it's lucky that I've been there, and I've been at some events, too. I want to tell you about one that Ralph mentioned, Bobby Thompson's home run, October the 3rd. I felt a little sorry for my giant broadcasting partner that day, Russ Hodges. Oh, Russ was going to have to be stuck on the radio. There were five radio broadcasts. I was going to be on Coast to Coast TV, and I thought that I had the plum assignment. Well, as you remember, it turned out quite differently. Russ Hodges' record became the most famous sports broadcast of all time. Television, no instant replay, no recordings in those days, and only Mrs. Harwell knows that I did the telecast of Bobby Thompson's home run. When I got home that night after the telecast, she said to me, she said, you know, Ernie, when they turned the camera on you after that home run, I saw you with that stunned look on your face, and the only other time I'd ever seen it was when we were married and when the kids were born. <laughs> that other saying, I'm a part of all that I have met, I think that would have to begin with my wonderful parents back in Atlanta when I was a youngster, five years old, I was tongue-tied. They didn't have much money, but they spent what they had sending me to speech teachers to overcome the handicap. I know that a lot of you people who've heard me on the radio probably still think I'm tongue-tied. But through the grace of God, officially, I'm not tongue-tied anymore. Also, I'm a part of the people that I've worked with in baseball that have been so great to me. Mr. Earl Mann of Atlanta, who gave me my first baseball broadcasting job. Mr. Branch Rickey at Brooklyn, Mr. Horace Stoneham, of the Giants, Mr. Jerry Hoffberger in Baltimore, and my present bosses, two of the greatest ever, Mr. John Fetzer and Mr. Jim Campbell. I'm also a part of the partners that I've worked with, and there have been so many great ones, beginning with Red Barber and Connie Desmond at Brooklyn and continuing on to my present partner, WJR's Paul Carey. But most of all, I'm a part of you people out there who've listened to me, because especially you people in Michigan, you Tiger fans, you've given me so much warmth, so much affection, and so much love. I know that this is an award that's supposed to be for my contribution to baseball, but let me say this. I've given a lot less to baseball than it's given to me. And the greatest gift that I've received from baseball is the way that the people in the game have responded to me with their warmth and with their friendship. Yes, it's better to be lucky than good, and I'm glad that I'm a part of all that I have met. We're all here 
with a common bond today. I think we're all here because we love baseball. Back in 1955, Ralph referred to this. I sat down and wrote a little definition of baseball to express my feelings about this greatest game of all. And I know that a lot of things have changed since then, especially in the strife-torn, strike-filled year. But my feelings about the game are still the same as they were back then, and I think maybe yours are too. And I'd like to close out my remarks for the next couple of minutes with your indulgence to see if your definition of baseball agrees with mine. Baseball is a president tossing out the first ball of the season and a scrubby schoolboy playing catch with his dad on the Mississippi farm. A tall, thin old man waving a scorecard from the corner of his dugout. That's baseball. And so is a big, fat guy with a bulbous nose running home one of his 714 home runs. There's a man in Mobile who remembers that Hannes Wagner hit a triple in Pittsburgh 46 years ago. That's baseball. And so is a scout reporting that a 16-year-old pitcher in Cheyenne is the coming Walter Johnson. Baseball is a spirited race of man against man, reflex against reflex, a game of inches. Every skill is measured. Every heroic, every fa failing is seen and cheered or booed and then becomes a statistic. In baseball, democracy shines its clearest. The only race that matters is the race of the bag. The creed is a rule book and color merely something to distinguish one team's uniform from another. Baseball is a rookie, his experience no bigger than the lump in his throat as he begins fulfillment of his dream. And it's a veteran too, a tired old man of 35, hoping that those aching muscles can pull him through another sweltering August and September. Nicknames of baseball, names like Zeke and Pie and Kai Kai and Home Run and Cracker and Dizzy and Dazzy. Baseball is the clear, cool eyes of Rogers Hornsby, the flashing spikes of a Ty Cobb, and an overaged pixie named Rabbit Moranville. Baseball, just a game, as simple as a ball and bat, and yet as complex as the American spirit it symbolizes. A sport, a business, sometimes almost even religion. While the fairy tale of Willie Mays making a brilliant World Series catch and then dashing off to play stickball in the streets with his teenage pals. That's baseball. So is a husky voice of a doomed Lou Gehrig saying, I consider myself the luckiest man on the face of this earth. Baseball is cigar smoke, hot roasted peanuts, the sporting news, ladies day down in front, take me out to the ball game in the Star Spangled Banner. And baseball is a tongue-tied kid from Georgia growing up to be an announcer and praising the Lord for showing him the way to Cooperstown. This is a game for America, still a game for America, this baseball. Thank you.